Whoever would save his life will lose it. So whoever tries to save himself, protect himself, his own interests, will eventually lose it. You may have temporary pleasures, temporary things, but whoever eventually, if you don't follow after Christ, you'll lose your own life. you lose eternity, right? So selflessness, right? Look at the example that Jesus set uh, in John chapter 13, uh, 1 through 20. I, I won't make you read all of it. But basically, uh, this is the portion where he, uh, where Jesus washes his disciples' feet. Uh, he, the God of the universe, the God who created us all, came down and washed the disciples' feet. Now, the feet is one of the what, dirtiest parts of the body, right? I, my feet smell pretty bad after I wear it all day. But imagine the disciples' feet. They're wearing chuckles, right? They're wearing chuckles and their feet are really dirty. And Jesus went down, took some water, and washed his feet. God is, Jesus is trying to show the example of selflessness, selflessness in this chapter. And further symbolizing the future that Christ dies for our sins. He is willing to reach down to the deepest part, the dirtiest part, and to purify us. Right? He was that selfless. The God of the universe who created us all was willing to come down and save us. And that is the example that he wants us to follow. The next thing I would like to talk about is the selflessness comes from agape love, which is what? What kind of love is that? Sacrificial love. It is a sacrificial type of love where there's no benefit, there may be no benefit towards us. The kind of reckless love that the world may consider as reckless. But we consider it sacrificial love. And we must experience this love first hand in order to display it to others. So if you do not have that experience with uh, Christ, that sacrificial love, that love deep inside that He embraces you, that He accepted you for who you are, I encourage you to experience that first. Because that is the heart of Christian ministry. The heart of Christian ministry is for you to experience the love of Christ and then to display it to people around you. Amen. And Amen. if you do not experience that, you won't be an effective minister of, the, of Christ. Mm. So I encourage you, especially if you're in this book, we're all called to be missionaries. Amen. Some may have it on the stage, some may have it in your local workplace. We all, once you became saved, you're all missionaries. Amen. But you should experience the love of Christ. Amen. Right? And spread that out to everyone else. Amen. Now, sometimes our self pops up and overcomes uh, the interest of Christ. Sometimes Christ is not the center of our heart. And sometimes we make ourselves the center. Um, if somebody could read James chapter 3 verse 16. I can read it quick. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. So where where you seek yourself and where you try to glorify yourself, there'll be what? Disorders. Every time you try to exemplify yourself or bring yourself up, there will be disorder. But the wisdom from above is first pure and peaceful, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. So when there is when you are trying to exemplify yourself, there'll be chaos, there'll be chaotic. But when you're trying to glorify Christ, the only true Savior, there'll be order. He will make all things pure. And if you continue to read in James chapter 4, 1, it says, What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and you quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your own passions. You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? God asks us to become selfless, right? And finally, what is the practical application of this? Uh, for, if somebody could read 1 John 3, 16 to 18, and I'd like to end off there. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we have to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has a hero, And love is action. It's something we learned in Sunday school earlier. 
Love is action. You can talk about it all day um, in the church, but if you don't actually do it, does it really mean anything? But you can have it in, inside. But God calls us to bring that forth out and minister to other people. The love that God showed us, we have to bring out and minister to other people. God wants us to be selfless, and that is one of the characteristics of Christians, is that they are selfless. Even uh, when someone, someone may attack us, we are forgiven. Why? Because we want them to be better. We are selfless. We're denying ourselves. Pride is what causes us to come back up and fight back. So, what I'd like to end off is, do, a, do an action of selflessness this week if you can. Um, practical steps, like at home, and I know I'm not that good at uh, practical things, like at home, like uh, washing dishes, I may not do it all the time. Uh, my parents are going to make me clean the house after this message when I get home. So, uh, do a, an act of kindness, it may, it may not have benefit towards you, but it's a complete act of selflessness. And that's what Christ calls us to do, and that's a, a marker of true Christianity, one of the markers of true Christianity. So I pray that this helps you uh, today. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. The worship team is going to come, and this is the time to...